generate electricity promises almost unlimited energy resources for today and tomorrow to meet the surging demands for safe, economical, smoke-free power. This is a spent fuel element from the reactor of an atomic power plant. Now, after one year in the power reactor, it is exhausted and must be removed. Not to be discarded like the ashes from a coal fire, but to have the valuable materials still inside reclaimed for future use. From atomic power plants throughout the United States and from research and test reactors, spent nuclear fuel elements in ruggedly built trucks and special railroad cars head toward western New York State and the first privately owned plant in the world built exclusively to recover nuclear fuel for future use. The plant of Nuclear Fuel Services, a majority-owned subsidiary of W.R. Grayson Company, is on a site leased from the New York State Atomic and Space Development Authority, located 30 miles south of Buffalo in West Valley, New York. Here begins the story of nuclear fuel reprocessing. Reprocessing nuclear fuel is a story of mechanical and chemical ingenuity that is contributing to the rapid growth of low-cost atomic-generated electric power and promises even more benefits as new uses are found for the byproducts of this plant. Each day, nuclear fuel services can process up to one ton of spent fuel elements, reclaiming the highly valuable uranium and plutonium still locked within them. Upon arrival, the shipping container is checked carefully in the receiving area. The superstructure removed. And the rugged cask, which contains the spent fuel elements, is lowered into a 45-foot deep pool of water, where the top is removed from the cask by remote-controlled wrenches. This cask contains 10 spent fuel elements. One by one, they are lifted out and each placed in its individual canister, always with 11 or more feet of water between the fuel element and the surface. Traveling cranes carry each canister, still underwater, to the fuel storage pool, where hundreds of fuel elements, each in its separate canister, are stored to await the beginning of the processing cycle. To convey a single canister to the process mechanical room, two claws on a mechanical arm take a canister from the fuel storage pool and transfer it underwater until it emerges through a trapdoor and the single fuel element is removed from the canister by means of remote controlled manipulators whose operators work behind four feet of concrete. Mechanical processing starts here. The spent uranium dioxide fuel is located inside the long tubes that are bundled together to make up the fuel element. The tubes are of high-strength metals, such as zirconium or stainless steel alloys, which are durable at high temperatures and extremely hard. The problem is to open these tubes so that later in the process, chemicals can go to work and separate the uranium, plutonium, and fission products from the metal of the tubes. The best way to do this is by sawing off the metal ends of the fuel elements with an abrasive saw. The fuel element, now minus its end fittings, is a bundle of tubes that is charged into this magazine. Positioning the rods and holding them securely while they are fed into a powerful mechanical shear that chops the tubes into short lengths so that the nitric acid used later in the process will be able to attack the spent fuel and dissolve it from the metal tubes. The guillotine pieces then fall into a chute leading to the general purpose cell. To receive the chopped pieces of metal, a cylindrical stainless steel basket perforated with small holes and containing a thin iron liner is placed in a transfer device that moves the basket into position under the chute, ready to receive the chopped metal scraps and used fuel. The iron liner holds the metal pieces and prevents the valuable powdered fuel from passing through the holes of the basket. When the basket is loaded with chopped fuel pieces, they can be either stored in this cell or 
lifted into the chemical processing cell, where large tanks filled with nitric acid receive the basket. The acid begins to chew away at the thin iron liner, quickly dissolving it, then attacking and separating the spent fuel from the chopped pieces of metal tubes. When the separation is complete, the nitric acid now contains dissolved uranium, plutonium, and fission products and is pumped out of the dissolver tanks. The stainless steel basket, which now contains only the pieces of chopped metal tubes that were not dissolved by the nitric acid, is removed from the dissolver tank and lowered to the general purpose cell for sampling to determine if all the uranium and plutonium has been removed from the chopped tubes. Representative samples are taken to a laboratory and analyzed. The remaining chopped pieces of metal are then packaged and buried in the plant's waste burial area. Quality control is an underlying theme at nuclear fuel services. The entire process is analyzed and monitored to guarantee that the efficiency of the system is up to required levels. For example, the dissolver solution from each dissolver batch is sampled and analyzed to establish precisely the amount and value of uranium and plutonium contained in the fuel. In this and other stages of the process, nuclear fuel services chemists determine such important factors as isotopic concentration, acidity, amount of impurities, and specific gravity. The entire reprocessing operation of nuclear fuel services is under centralized control from this master control room where every part of the operation is observed and coordinated around the clock. Operators watch the process with the help of this diagram that pinpoints every step in the cycle. Shown here schematically from arrival and storage of the spent fuel elements, sawing and chopping of the fuel elements, dissolving in nitric acid, burial of the chopped metal pieces, separation and purification of the uranium and plutonium, and shipping. The next step in separating the uranium, plutonium, and fission products is to remove the major portion of the fission products, the ashes and clinkers of atomic fire, from the solution that has come from the dissolver tanks. This is done by means of a selective extraction process the scrub liquid literally blots up the fission products and removes them through the bottom of the tank. The fission products are concentrated and then buried in large and deep underground waste storage tanks under state and federal regulations. The remaining solution, containing the valuable uranium and plutonium, both with lingering traces of fission products, is pumped to another operation where a process called selective reduction takes place. The uranium and plutonium are separated into two streams, and both streams then undergo further treatment to remove the last traces of fission products. To rid the plutonium of any lingering traces of fission products, it is passed through an ion exchange bed, which literally holds the plutonium in the bed and allows the remaining fission products to pass through. Regeneration of the ion exchange bed recovers the purified plutonium. Uranium also undergoes a further purification step by passing it through silica gel, which adsorbs any last trace of the unwanted fission product. The concentrated uranium nitrate solution stored in this tank prior to Shing is the primary product of nuclear fuel services. Plutonium is shipped by pumping it into plastic cylinders, then placing them in large steel drums for shipment. From the storage tank, the solution of uranium nitrate is pumped into a tank truck. Then the Indian Point Atomic Power Plant near Peekskill, New York, on the shores of the Hudson River, which supplies nuclear-generated power to the New York metropolitan area. This plant, like many others, has already proved itself as a safe, practical source of energy for economical generation of electric power. In the years to come, atomic energy will produce an ever-increasing amount of electric power. 
and the commercial fuel reprocessing plant of nuclear fuel services with its innovative technology will help make atomic power plants a prime source of economical electric power that offers total electric living. Appliances and housewares that reduce drudgery in the home. Economical electric power has been a key factor in building this nation's tremendous industrial output. And the continued availability of low-cost power is essential to our continued growth and progress. Nuclear fuel services has the capability of further expanding the uses of the byproducts of the fuel reprocessing cycle. Radioisotopes extracted from the fission products are used in medicine to help alleviate human suffering and prolong life. Radioisotopes are used as tracers and for inspection in many industries, including rubber, automotive, cement, steel, and aircraft. And are also useful in remote radar sites, navigational buoys, and untended beacons. Food can be sterilized and pasteurized with a long shelf life through the use of radioisotopes. For the space effort, radioactive isotope power units are an important energy source for auxiliary power in satellites. The role of the peaceful atom will continue to expand in the field of power generation, furnishing economical and smoke-free electric power to factories, homes, farms, and the large metropolitan areas of America. Civilian nuclear power is here to stay, and the atom is the symbol of this new generation of energy that is being used at an accelerating pace for the betterment of mankind.